Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all key culture collides. Today on the show, we're taking a look at the NECA, Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning, Jason Voorhees. Now this is the Jason Voorhees from the beginning of the movie in Tommy Jarvis's nightmare sequence. Um, <clears throat> as you, most of you know, Jason wasn't actually in the film other than in the nightmare sequence. Now, I'm not going to tell you the name of the actual killer in the movie in case you haven't seen it yet, which I don't understand why you wouldn't. It's been around forever. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the NECA Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning, Jason Voorhees. First things first, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the box that he comes in. As you can see, there's a nice image on the front. One of the posters for Friday the 13th Part 5. Uh, looks like maybe that's Tommy Jarvis on the front. Uh, holding a machete, dripping in blood. And we've got a hockey mask right behind him. It's not the hockey mask that Jason wears, but it's a hockey mask. And you can tell that because there's no uh, checks on it. Uh, Jason's mask always had the red checks you got the should have had the red v here uh red check here and here and of course the killer in friday the 13th part 5 had blue checks that's how fans knew it wasn't the real jason when this film came out so anyway here's a picture of the top of the box there's the image of the side. There's the image of the other side. It's exactly the same. As you can see, it says NECA Real Toys at the bottom. Then we have the back. Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning. Tommy Jar Young Tommy Jarvis may have escaped from Crystal Lake, but he's still haunted by the gruesome events that happened there. When gory murders start happening at a secluded halfway house for troubled teens, where he now lives, it seems like his nightmarish nemesis, Jason Voorhees, is back for more sadistic slaughters. Has Jason returned from the grave? And as you can see here, you've got Jason wielding his machete. You have Jason in a hockey mask that didn't actually appear in the movie. Uh, that hockey mask uh, appeared on one of the posters for the movie. And I have to say, I tried this hockey mask out. It looks okay. However, if you happen to have the Halloween Michael Myers figure from NECA, it looks a whole lot better on his body. And you'll see what I mean later on. But in the background, we've got Tommy Jarvis visiting Jason Voorhees' grave. You have Jason with his axe, and you have Jason in the grave with worms crawling out of his eyes. Turn it back around. And you have the window box, which is kept closed by Velcro. There's Jason coming out of his grave right there. Uh, there's the uh, mold to hold him in. Uh, and it looks like maybe rain. Rain and a forest background. So anyway, let's go ahead and set, move this to the side. And we'll take a look at some of the accessories. So first things first, Jason comes with. His custom-made headstone and dirt. Uh, as you can see here, his headstone isn't actually stone. It's made of wood. Uh, three planks of wood cut to look like a headstone. With two planks, or no, three planks, uh, holding it together in the back with nails. And as you can see, Jason Voorhees is painted in white on the makeshift headstone and there's a bunch of uh dirt piled up around it pretty cool now let's go ahead and take a look at some of jason's weapons jason comes with this pick it's pretty cool but he can't really hold it and you'll see what i mean by that later you have the brown handle 
and it doesn't really look wood grainish like it probably should uh, but the metallic gray looks pretty nice a very nice paint job I just wish they would have made the handle look a little bit more wooden Jason also comes with an axe double-headed axe and as you can see it is covered in blood now you can do a number of things with this axe you can have it in uh have jason hold it in his hands or you can have him uh get chopped in the head with it <laughs> and you'll see what i mean by that uh later in the video uh as you can see got the brown handle again not a lot of shading to it but at least they put the wood grain if it'll focus come on focus it's a little blurry at least they put the wood grain in the actual sculpt Sorry guys, my camera is not wanting to focus on this. I'm not sure why. But anyway, they, you can make out the wood grain in this. Um, I would have liked a little bit more shading though. Uh, they did a good job with the uh, metallic gray uh, in parts of the axe that you can see. <clears throat> Along with the blood drenching the axe with blood and i think i think it would have little, looked a little bit better if they had added some blood spatter on the handle of the axe because i mean if an axe is going to be this covered in blood you know it's going to get some on the handle <laughs> jason also comes with his signature machete And once again, this is one of the cases where it's not really wanting to capture the full detail of the machete. A very nice metallic gray paint job on the blade. And as you can see, they got the sculpt down perfectly because it actually looks sharpened. Then you got the three rivets, four rivets actually, on the handle with the silver with part of the blade <clears throat> in between the handle that's very nice uh, mine does have some scuffing on one side of it though not sure what that's all about <clears throat> jason also comes with an extra left hand this, of course, is from the scene where he gets, uh, I can't remember if it was the machete or the axe that chopped, chopped his hand in half. Um, I want to say maybe the machete, but I don't know. As you can see, his hand is split down the middle. Very nice detail. You got some dried blood on his hand. On the palm of his hand and the back of his hand some very dark uh, rotting dirty skin tone there and they even managed to sculpt in the fingernails and the final thing that Jason comes with are three extra heads first we'll take a look at my favorite head which I told you guys looks better on the body to Michael Myers. The masks do not come off his sculpt, off his head. The, uh, the straps are a separate mold. So is the mask, but it's glued on. Uh, the strap is only glued on at this point behind the head. The rest of it is loose. And as you can see, this strap has managed to work its way loose. 
So I may end up having to put some glue on there to hold it. But no, the ma the mask does not lift off the face at all, which is disappointing. As you can see here, you got some uh, veins running up the back of his head. Uh, you got the the damage to his skull right there. And as you can see, one ear is actually lower than the other. See the top of it comes right underneath that strap. Whereas this one is further down. It is smaller. I, but I just like the sculpt of this mask. It's very reminiscent of Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Uh, I can't remember that character's name. Um, but it's very reminiscent. Then we have a slight, da slightly damaged head. Um, maybe this was right after he had been hurt, uh, either with the axe or with the uh, machete. I can't remember. It's been a while since I watched the movie, guys. Uh, but as you can see, there's not a lot of blood. Uh, that will change, though, with the next... No, I was mistaken. <laughs> I just looked at the heads, and uh, no, this is the only damaged head. Uh, the other one, the other two do still have that crack in the mask, uh, but they lack the blood. And I think it would have looked a little bit better if they added a little bit more blood on this one. And as you can see, this hash mark, it's not complete. It's only two-thirds of the way complete. I'm not sure what that, why that is. And why they neglected the side hashes. But as you can see, it's dirtied. Uh, there's Looks like there's a couple rivets. In the side of the mask right there and there if you guys can make that out and as you can see there's a lot of damage to the side of his face blood and once again this mask does not come off now we'll take a look at the corpse head of Jason all the same detail around the head and everything. Uh, same damage. These are all pretty much the same head sculpts. Just different mask sculpts. As you can see, he's got worms crawling out of his eyes. Uh, it is a lot dirtier. Almost looks camo. And they did complete this hash mark here. However, he is missing the hash marks on the side. Um, and I can understand why they left those out because the worms are making it difficult uh, to actually paint that in. Now we'll go ahead and zoom out and we're going to take a look at Jason himself. So here he is, the man, the myth, the legend, Jason Voorhees in all his glory. Now, as I said, this figure is made by NECA. I found him at my local Walmart. Um, 
the Walmarts here in town don't really carry the NECA figures, so I've got to travel out of town. Uh, same distance from my house to the out-of-town Walmart as it is to the two that are in town. So, <clears throat> the one out of town carries all the cool NECA figures. So, and I was very... I debated on which Jason I wanted to get. They had a number of different Jasons uh, from the different movies displayed. Uh, ultimately, it came down to, did I want this one or did I want the Jason from Freddy vs. Jason? And ultimately, I ended up getting this Jason simply because of this head. Uh, I've, I've always liked that mask. Um... From the posters and everything. I know it doesn't appear in the movies. But I just love the sculpt of that mask. We'll go ahead and take a look. At his articulation. His head can look up. It can look down. And you can get him in some pretty cool poses too. Um, you can spin it all the way around. It is on a peg. So that you can swap out the other heads, which we will do here in just a little bit. His arms go up that far. They are on ball joints. Uh, not really a ratchet, but they do lock whenever they get to a certain position. They can go all the way around. At the elbow, they are on a hinge, a single hinge. As you can see there, it only goes to about that point. The hand is also on a peg so that you can swap it out. Uh, it doesn't move too much. He's a composer. <laughs> And then you have an ab crunch. And his, just like with the Michael Myers figure, his torso, his shirt is a separate piece. And it's made out of a softer plastic. So you can get some good ab, ab crunching there. And he can turn. Which is nice. And his legs can go out to there. They can go forward that much. And like a, <clears throat> just like with the upper half, the lower part of his por uh, torso, the crotch area of his pants, is made out of the same softer plastic. So it doesn't hinder the leg movement too much. And as you can see, it is on a ball joint. You can go back to there. And that's with both legs. His knee is on a single hinge. You have foot swivel and a slight rocker, but his pants do kind of hinder it. And now, before we get into the weapons, let's go ahead and swap out his heads so you can see how each head looks on the figure. Just pops off just like that. And before you ask, um, <clears throat> yes, uh, since I did try this head on Michael Myers' body, I did try to put Michael Myers' mask on this body. Uh, however, the hole for the Michael Myers' mask is a little bit too small. Uh, they used a bigger peg for this for this mold. So anyway, here's the damaged head. It fits on just like that. And now I'll show you what you can do with either the machete or the axe. It looks better with the axe since it's all covered in blood anyway. Uh, now for this, you can't just put the axe like that. Otherwise it'll fall out. You got to take it from the bottom 
and slide it in just like that. <laughs> and so you get that iconic scene from Friday the 13th, part four. Okay. And since we've got the axe out already, I'll show you. Um, <clears throat> they do need, they, they really should have gave him extra right hands. Because once you put the axe in his hand, you're going to, more than likely, you're going to have him hold it up here a little bit more. And so it stretches out the fingers. And yeah, just like that. I know the image on the box has him holding it more like this. But either way, you know, you really do need extra hands because it's it stretches out those fingers. And once you do that, it's hard to get the machete to hold right. Guess that works okay. And then with the pick, it's even worse because it's going to stretch those fingers out even more. <clears throat> But luckily, they're made of a softer plastic, so you can kind of push them back into place. So anyway, there's the damaged head. Here's the corpse head. And that doesn't look too bad. Uh, that's more for being displayed laying down in his grave with the... Headstone above him, maybe covered in dirt or something, partially. <clears throat> Not bad. And now, here's what I was talking about with this head. It doesn't really go with the figure that well, because the mask is a lot cleaner. It really stands out. <laughs> he went shopping for a new mask. <laughs> Uh, but it still looks, it's, it looks okay. But now, I'll show you how he compares to Michael Myers. Let's go ahead and we'll take this back off. Put his traditional head back on. And we'll stand Michael Myers right next to him. And it does appear that Michael is a little bit taller than Jason. Let's go ahead and go to the handy dandy tape measure. And we're gonna go ahead and measure these guys. Michael appears to weigh in or stand in at about seven and a half inches tall. Jason, on the other hand, is about seven and a quarter. And now I'll show you what I was talking about with the mask that I like on Michael's body. That looks really nice. They should, they, he just needs some hair though, so he doesn't look so much Jason like. Um, you could almost make a custom figure out of these two. What would you call? this killer <laughs> leave your choices in the comments below uh, however like i said the peg on jason's body is a little bit bigger than michael's so the head it just slides on and off uh, it it's not really held on there very tightly so let's go ahead and take that off we'll put michael's mask back on and now let's See if we can get these guys in some really awesome poses.
It's a new movie coming out this summer. The one you've all been waiting for. This is Jason vs. Michael. So anyway, there you have it, guys. This has been the NECA, Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning, Jason Voorhees. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on a single video. I've been Shane, and this has been Comic Gen TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button right there so you stay up to date on all things geek culture. Also, go ahead and check out one of these two playlists on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched. I'm Shannon for Comic Gen TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks.